She was shocked to find she was depleted after only seven days on prednisone. What was she depleted of? Potassium. I said, wow, how did you find out you were depleted? She said, Dr. Megan, I had every side effect on the list. So when my legs started aching, like growing pains, I immediately blamed prednisone. Then I Googled it. It can deplete your potassium, causing muscle aches. I found some potassium-rich foods in the house and felt relief within a day or so of eating. Crazy stuff. I agree with this prednisone warrior. She was suffering from nutrient depletion of potassium by prednisone. People can be so surprised by many of the side effects of prednisone and be so distracted by the ones that are demanding their attention, like insomnia or the hunger cravings. But maybe those side effects are actually caused by nutrient depletion. So let's dive in and understand how prednisone causes nutrient depletion of potassium. So first of all, what in the world is potassium? Potassium is an essential mineral that our bodies use to function properly. We absolutely need it for our heart, for our muscles, for our kidneys to work or we'll die. People actually can be killed by injecting them with potassium. That's often a way that the lethal injection happens to criminals and it's incredibly painful and it causes sudden instant death. So you absolutely have to have potassium within the exact right balance, the correct range. And if not, things can be very dangerous. So as our prednisone warrior Julie mentioned, potassium is in certain foods. And there are many foods including bananas, oranges, tomatoes, potatoes, lots of fruits and vegetables are high in potassium. And our bodies cannot make potassium, so we have to consume it either as food or as a supplement. So if you eat those delicious fruits and vegetables, that's one way to get potassium into your body. And the requirement for potassium is different for different people. So females who are under 18 need about 2,300 milligrams a day. Women who are over 18 or 19 and above need 2,600 milligrams a day. Men who are growing, that was young men, 14 to 18 need 3,000 milligrams a day, and adult men over 19 need 3,400 milligrams of potassium per day. That's according to the United States Dietary Reference Intakes or Recommended Dietary Allowance from the National Academy of Medicine. So that's the adequate, appropriate intake of potassium. But while on prednisone, your body is losing more, so you probably need more than that but we don't actually know specifically how much. So the fruits, bananas, apricots, peaches, watermelon, cherries, vegetables like avocado, spinach, squash, potatoes, broccoli, tomatoes, beans, and dairy products and coconut water. I really like coconut water. So how does potassium work? It is an ion. It's usually shown as K plus in the chemical literature. And that little plus sign means that there's an extra positive charge. It's missing an electrolyte, a negative sign, um, which makes it an electrolyte. And so it's looking to balance itself out because it and sodium are both one single plus sign. The Na plus and the K plus are opposites. So outside your cells in your body and inside your cells in your body, there's sodium and there's potassium. And they are playing this dance all of the time. One's a lot stronger outside and one's a lot stronger inside. So usually there's a lot more sodium outside your cells and a lot more potassium inside your cells. And your body even has a pump to force it to stay that way. But if it gets messed up or if the ratio gets off, it can be fatal. And so um, it's important to keep that right ratio to help our nerves and muscles work. Like our nerves and muscles send the signals to contract or to step away or whatever. One of the important things to do that is potassium. And in addition to that, the right amount of potassium in our blood keeps the correct blood pressure. 
So when we have too much sodium and not enough potassium in our blood, that can cause high blood pressure. So if we get less sodium and more potassium in the better balance, that's better blood pressure usually and keeps our heart beating regularly. So how does low potassium affect us? If you have a blood test and they check how much potassium is in your blood, there's um, the level is called a milliequivalence per liter. And between three and 3.5, you might have symptoms of low potassium. And normal is between 3.5 and five. And then below that, below the, the first measurement I told you was 2.5 to three. And that's when you can get cramping and you can feel yucky and your muscles start aching and you can feel weak. And below 2.5, you can have serious heart issues. They can do an EKG or an ECG on your heart and it'll show changes like you, it's not beating right. You can get arrhythmias is what that's called. You can have paralysis like your muscles just aren't going to move. Low blood pressure, your urination increases and you can get really seriously dehydrated. So we need to keep potassium just right between 3.5 and 5. And there are certain side effects of prednisone that are worse or could be affected by this loss of potassium. And those include moon face. So moon face is when our cheeks get round and swollen and it could be because of water or fat moving into places where it shouldn't normally be. And so that swelling could be because of potassium. I have already mentioned the heart, um, blood pressure and heart palpitations, hand tremors, like shaking, muscle loss or muscle might pain or other muscle issues can be caused by low potassium. Urine issues, having lots of urination can be because of the potassium changes and swelling like in your knees, that's where I had it, and other places could be because of the wrong balance of potassium in our bodies. And so this can be made even worse if you're also taking other medications that affect potassium. Those other medications include things called beta-2 changers, agonists, such as albuterol, that's common for people who have asthma, or Sudafed, which is common if you like have a cold, or epinephrine, um, diuretics, like furosemide or torsemide or acetazolamide, high dose insulin, laxatives, things that are causing you to have to go to the bathroom faster. And then certain conditions can also cause low potassium, like chronic kidney disease, adrenal disorders, the prednisone is causing adrenal changes, but there are specific adrenal disorders like Cushing syndrome that on their own can cause potassium issues. Eating disorders, because you're throwing up, um, like bulimia neurosia, you might be throwing up the potassium you ate and you're getting the wrong balance. And then people who have excessive sweating, they're like sweating out the potassium, that's called hyperhidrosis. And so any of those conditions can also have potassium issues. So if you were to supplement potassium either by eating it in your diet, getting a prescription strength tablet prescribed by your doctor, they often do that for people with heart disease and kidney problems, then you can also supplement with a vitamin. And those are the three ways you could get it. How could it help? So if we give potassium, it can support overall health by first regulating fluid balance. We get the right ratio of sodium and potassium in our cells and because prednisone can sometimes cause fluid retention and that leads to swelling in our bodies so if we get the right balance of fluid in our cells and outside of our cells that may reduce swelling and bloating and water weight gain next if we supplement with potassium that can support our nerve and muscle function because having the wrong amount of potassium can cause muscle weakness cramping like our Julie, our prednisone warrior, mentioned at the very beginning, and we need the proper balance for proper muscle and nerve function. And that can support the health and strength of your muscles and reduce the risk for cramps. And then third is manage blood pressure. Because prednisone on its own can cause high blood pressure in certain people. It's one of the most common side effects of prednisone. It's often subtle, but in some people it's extreme. Prednisone is known to help regulate blood pressure levels. And so if you get the adequate intake of potassium, then you may potentially help 
keep a stable, healthy blood pressure. So if you take potassium and you need to supplement it, I mentioned it, you can get it in those three ways. I forgot to mention a fourth way. And if you're in the hospital, they can give it intravenously. And I kind of alluded to that at the very beginning. If somebody like gives you a super fast injection of potassium, a really high dose, that can kill you instantly because it stops your heart. So you want to generally not have to manage this on your own. You want to be following it with a doctor and get within the, that adequate intake range. And if you're having a hard time eating fruits and vegetables or you're feeling nauseated, then maybe supplementing can help. And you want to spread it out throughout the day. It can be pretty hard on your stomach if you just like chug five grams of potassium all at once. You'd want to spread it out, breakfast, lunch, and dinner just like you normally would eat potassium breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then the American Heart Association said that people with high blood pressure who consume 3,500 to 5,000 milligrams of potassium daily are expected to lower their blood pressure by about four to five millimeters of mercury. And so that's almost as good as some prescription drugs. So that's really important. And then some people get kidney stones and it can help with that too. Finally, if you're thinking, wow, how can I, you know, get potassium and other nutrients that prednisone's stealing, I invented a supplement designed especially for people on prednisone called Neutronizone. It has potassium in it and a whole bunch of other nutrients that prednisone depletes. You can get it at Neutronize.com. And make sure you talk with your doctor to get exactly in the range of potassium that you need for your body. The amount of potassium that's in here should be safe for pretty much anyone on prednisone. But you may need a higher dose. And so definitely check with your doctor if you've been feeling those symptoms that I've mentioned above. Signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.